Thank you for joining again today for a moment around God's Word and prayer. May God give you grace. I trust all has been well for you. We're praying protection from the virus. We're all trying to be wise, and yet we're trying to redeem these moments and turn this crisis into opportunity. Partly for that reason, we've been walking through the book of Philippians this week. This is, I called it a book, but it's really a letter to the church of Philippi that Paul wrote while he himself was a prisoner in Rome. So talk about confinement. He knew confinement. And he ends this book, this letter, by talking about a most remarkable subject. It's the subject of contentment. You know, it's hard to feel content when you're feeling confined or you're feeling fearful or you're just flat out going stir crazy. It's hard to feel content when you're running out of toilet paper and your supplies are getting low and you're quarantined and you're not sure who to turn to. It's tough to be content. But listen to what Paul said. He said in verse 10 of Philippians 4, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. So he's talking about the church up in northern Greece in Philippi. He, of course, is in Rome. And they had concern for him. They had heard he'd been in prison. But being so distant, there was not much they could do. But he said, indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. But Paul's going to say, but that's okay, because I'm content. It doesn't matter whether your supplies could reach me or not. I've just learned to be content. So in verse 11, he said, I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I sometimes like to think of contentment as an unaffected satisfaction. In other words, my, the satisfaction in my soul is not dependent or affected by circumstances around me. This is what Paul's saying. He says, I've learned to be content no matter what the circumstances around me are. That's almost an inconceivable way of living, but it's the privilege of people who know Christ and have the Holy Spirit working in their lives. Contentment is a disconnect from our circumstances when it comes to our own personal well-being. It means our core, the core of our well-being, the core of our identity, is not connected to circumstances that can change and over which we don't have control many times. But the core of identity is the unchanging core of Christ and the Spirit of God in our lives. So he goes on to say, I, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. So I've, I've, I've experienced both, but I have learned. And contentment is a learned art. It's a learned trait of life. He said, I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or living in want. Now, it's easy to be content when we're well-fed and living in plenty. Pretty tough to be content when we're hungry or in want. But Paul says, eh, I'm content regardless of my circumstances. It's, uh, he said, I've learned that my life and my well-being is not affected by what may or may not be happening around me. Let me just say quickly that in the quest for contentment, we're not going to stop default to complacency. Paul's not talking about complacency. Complacency has no place, has no passion for mission. Complacency has no need for faith. Complacency has no tolerance for sacrifice. We're not talking about complacency. We're talking about being willing to make sacrifices, being passionate for the mission, but not affected by the circumstances around us. And so how does Paul end this paragraph? With that famous verse that we usually apply to other things. But he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it's true, we can do all things through Christ. But what he's really talking about is whether I have a lot or I have a little, whether circumstances are in my favor or not right now, I can be content no matter what because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So would you pray for, with me? Father, we just pray where contentment is elusive to us right now, where we're more just upset and discontent. We just pray that you'll settle our hearts. We pray that our well-being will be settled in you. We pray that you'll fill us with the Holy Spirit. 
we pray we'll not just be complacent about things, but that we will be truly content because we can do all things through Christ. I thank you for that powerful affirmation. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. May that be our prayer and our declaration, every one of us. Lord, whether, whether circumstances are in our favor or whether we're just feeling confined and restricted and fearful, we just pray that you'll help us to be content because of your strength within us. In Jesus' name, amen.